Hi and welcome to another Tabitha's Glass Emporium YouTube video. I had this idea of doing something inspired by the uh, picture of Scream and using a drop vessel with skulls to make our XL um, skull marini stretch by drop vesseling it. So I had this idea and today I'm going to show you how I made this. So for the first thing we're going to do for this project is press some circles together. Now we've got some various different circles and different colours um, going from greys to blues, um, that's like an uh, uh, indigo blue to kind of reds. Um, uh, for this, we are going to just put a kiln shelf on this, press this down um, it's, uh, and get it in the kiln and then we can have a look at it when it comes out. So here this is out of the kiln. Um, it's kind of hard to see right now, I'm just going to put a bit of water on it. Um, uh, it's kind of a cool colour. I quite like the, the um, way this bit has gone out. I drew round the, using the drop ring the size of the actual piece so I know what I've got to work with. The, this whole edge is actually going to be waste because once we've dropped it that will be waste. I need also for it um, tecta. So I want to make it quite, a, we call these a blank. When you're dropping a piece, you're making, you make a blank first. So I need a thick blank. So I've got, um, this side is going to be cool. It's going to be red and that's going to be the inside. And I'm going to put um, uh, tecta on it and fuse all that together. That'd be full fused. But then I've got my people. So I've got these um, guys. I just, so you see, I kind of drew on what I wanted and they're going to go on the piece like so. Um, around and the, the, the hope is that when we drop it because we're going to drop it quite far that they will stretch including the skulls and you'll kind of get a stretched effect of it so there we go there's those um, so what I want to do is glue these down now and then I'm going to fuse it that way up so that these press into the glass so when they full fuse they don't distort so I'm just going to, I want glue that um, sticks quite quickly. So rather than using the gel glue, I'm just going to use um, white PVA. This PVA bottle is somewhat broken. Um, I'm just going to put the glue down. I'm making a mess here. As you know, it all burns out. I probably shouldn't be putting quite so much glue down, but... Um, so I'm now going to just get the pieces into place. I'm trying to make sure the heads are inside the um, the ring. So I'm kind of manipulating them around. And a bit. I might need to just cut a little bit off the top of this one. I think it's still a bit too big. Um, and so we can let this glue dry and then we can flip it and fuse it that way. Well, now we need to dam it. Um, so when it's in the kiln, we'll then dam, dam it with this and another piece. Um, just, we'll cut them off and put some um, lake box around. This is six mil. Um, we should have used three mil because six mil is quite extravagant to use, but we've obviously cut it by mistake. Um, but just use, you could use one mil or three mil. You don't need to use six mil. Um, so that can go in the kiln and we can have a look when it's all fused together, how it looks. So here this is ready to go in the kiln and we can see what it looks like when it comes out. So here is this blank out of the kiln. Now I've given it a sandblast. Um, it's gonna be drop uh, ringed and really slow drop ringed. So it doesn't matter, it's sandblast. By the time it's finished going through the drop ring, it will, um, have, the shine will have come back up. It's pretty thick. You can see it's really quite thick. Um, this side's quite interesting. That's gonna be the inside of the vessel. So I'm not so worried about how that looks. Um, it's, I like the fact that it's going to be red and I think that's going to be cool. So I've got my drop ring here. Now I've just put some um, fibre paper on it. I know that there's some great products out there that help stop glass falling through. This is a heavy piece of glass. It's not going to fall through. Um, it can go on there. So I'm going to make sure I want this pattern on the outside. So that goes on the bottom. And I'm going to pick it up and then make sure that it was all lining up. Well, that was pretty good. Um, I want my skulls all inside the ring so that's pretty good and then it's going to go in the kiln on some high posts we'll look at in a minute like this. So here this 
So here's the setup in the kiln. I've got a bit of thin fire at the bottom just to stop it sticking to the bottom of the um, of the uh, bricks because that's what the surface is. I've got this deep to kiln. So I was thinking of going higher and I was thinking of going to, to this height. Um, but I worry that that's too high. Uh, so I'm sort of, I think we'll probably just go and go to this height. You've got to remember you also got the height of the, the um, whatever you're using as your ring. So if it's silk mat or um, these are you know, uh, ceramic, that's also adding to the height. So that will be the height of the final vessel. Um, so I'm going to drop and ring it. Now, for firing schedules, for me, I like to do these overnight. So I effectively go, it's um, 3.30 now. I'm going to be in, in at 7.30 in the morning, which means I have 3.30 so 7.30 p.m. is 3.30, 4.30, 5.30, 6.30, 7.30, it's four hours plus 12 hours to bring me to the, to the, um, to, to uh, 7.30 um, a.m. So that's 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 hours. Now I want to, I drop, um, I do my drop rings at a temperature when they're this sort of big hole at about um, 6.70. I'm going to say, so this is centigrade. So I divide 670 by, uh, what did I just say, 16 hours, Tina, 16 hours. And that will give me the temperature I'll rate a ramp at. So I'm just literally ramping very slowly all night long. So that when I come in the morning, it'll be at top temperature and coming down, which means the blank has time to heat up and get really kind of gooey, the glass. It has the time for the heat to get in there and it to be really gooey. I don't mind my kilns gonna be running all night, but in the morning it's going to be ready to, to, to watch. Now I'm not 100% sure on those calculations because I'm talking about it while I'm doing it, but we'll put a little calculation up at the end. I'll do a slide showing how you calculate. If you want time and you think I've got four, um, 16 hours and uh, you know to get to a temperature, you just divide that temperature by the number of hours and then that will be my ramp and that will be my rate uh, for it. So we're gonna put this in and tomorrow morning we can have a look at it as it's dropping. So we're here in the morning, um, the temperature's 660 and we're gonna have a quick peek inside and see what it's doing. So you can see it's started to go down, but it's got a long way to go. So we're gonna close it and just probably check it every, I'd say 20 minutes at the moment. At the beginning, I wanna check it some, um, more regularly because if the glass is too soft, it will really drop quickly and it does what's called an elephant's foot where you end up with lots of thick glass at the bottom and the sides are very thin and you, your vessel is ruined. So I'm gonna sort of just make sure that the temperature isn't, um, isn't getting too hot. Now I've opened it quite a few times, so it will drop, the temperature will drop down um, and it's on six, 6.20 now. Um, you'll also, I, you know, I have it held at this temperature for like seven hours because it, you want to drop slowly. You don't want to drop fast um, because it's less controllable. You want to drop nice and slowly and be patient with it. So we'll keep an eye on this and film it throughout the course of it dropping. As we can see, it's dropped a little bit further and we'll just keep checking on it. So it's getting there. We put the heads a bit low, but it's going to be okay. So it's down. It's um, and so I need to push it on. Um, I've got to go on to the next program now. I don't know how to do that on this one. It is that button. But it's obviously not going to do it right in a second. So in a second, I've just got to let it run, um, and. Uh, then, there we go, so I can push it onto the... So now it's dropping in temperature. I can also vent the kiln. Please stand back, Tina. Vent the kiln a bit. To reduce the, the heating. I'm gonna get Tina to come around and film this side. Because it's interesting, one of the heads, but this side was closer. So it's stretchy stretched. Where some of the heads this side haven't really stretched. But it's kind of cool. 
sort of done what we wanted it to do. Um, so that's cooling down. Now we can then it and have a look when it comes out how it looks. So here it is, out and done. We need to cut the rim off. Um, it's kind of cool. I mean, I've never done this before, and I think it's a kind of interesting idea to getting these things to stretch. You know, this one, um, they were all at the rim, so for some reason this, um, this stretched differently than the others, and some have really stretched, and some are looking kind of like crazy flames. I like it. So I'm going to cut the rim off, and uh, we're going to film cutting the rim off, and... So I push this all the way to the back and I'm going to lift this up as high as it will go um, and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut along the rim here uh, as it's on. You won't be able to hear because it's going to be on. So here this is with the rim polished. I think this is a really interesting um, idea. I'm not sure it's my cup of tea, but I like it as a kind of an idea that I could take further about stretching the Marini and particularly stretching pictorial Marini to get these faces. I think this just looks awesome. And I love the color variation from using the pressed glass and having this red inside. And if you, I don't know whether you can see it, it gets very red to the top. This is a browny, deep, rust, rusty red colour, which is just gorgeous. And I think works for this project. It's cool, it's different, and it's completely unique. And I think as an idea, it sort of works like, yeah, it works. It's, um, yeah, it's totally different. Remember, you can buy our Skull Marini at tabithasglassemporium.com. And uh, you can also sign up to our newsletter. Until next time, happy fusing.